began with a call coming out of left field. my business, you live and die on your reputation, sometimes literally. Just when I think I've seen it all, something new pops up. I'm a private detective, and the name is Dobbs. Just you and me again, sweetheart. This case was odd from the start. Too odd. Making me sweat without knowing why. First, I didn't know if I was hired. Maybe I was working for a dead guy. I guess I'm a sucker for a dame in distress.
betray in the pool because he was afraid of drowning. I went to look for him, and I found him. And then I went to the phone book to call you, and here you are. That's Frank Gresham, the movie producer. Yeah, that's him. Someone should call his wife. Frank was going to put me in the movies. At least, that's what he said. He was a loudmouth drunk. I couldn't make it in the sack. But he was the only guy that was ever nice to me. What about you? You seem nice. This is a messy situation. Gambling debts, bad divorce, enemies on every side of the law, payola, at least. That's the word on the streets. A lot of people are going to be happy to find out he's dead. Before we say anything else, are you hiring me, Miss... Uh... Jane Bennett. That's the stage name Frank gave me. I'm an actress, no matter what anyone else says. Miss Bennett. A thing like this could really hurt my career, you know. Don't get me wrong, it's a horrible thing that happened, but this can't be in the papers. Not with me involved, anyway. Not with my past. There needs to be another story without my name attached. And that's where you come in. The studio, the wife, the mob. They'll pay to cover it up. So don't you worry about getting paid. We'll all do all right in the end. The problem is, 
is this isn't an accident. Someone doesn't just fall into the middle of the pool. He was already dead when he was thrown in. And whoever did this wants to pin this on you, dollface. It's too late to leave town. You and I are already up to our necks into this. Only, I'm the sap that doesn't know anything. someone in the coroner's office that can tidy up the paperwork. I know a good lawyer who isn't cheap, and the DA and I go way back. That's about all I can do. The title is private investigator, but I don't invest myself personally. You understand? What's your first name, Mr. Dobbs? Cecil. Okay. Cecil Dobbs. Well, if I'm going to talk to the cops, I better go get dressed. I don't want to get a ticket for an indecent experience. It's all smoke and mirrors, isn't it, Cecil? How's that? I mean, show business, relationships, life. It's an illusion. Well, I can't blame a girl for trying. It crossed my mind to follow her inside. The animal in me had been aroused. There wasn't enough time to finish what he started. And I didn't want to start something I couldn't finish either. I didn't believe her or her story. Still, I wanted to believe her. Perhaps he was the lucky one after all, living like a king and being put out of his misery. She was right. Smoke and mirrors. Four hours at the police station, got the cops nothing, and me a throbbing headache. When they finally got tired of talking to a wall, they cut me loose. to the bone, and I knew the next day was going to be one for the record books. Something wasn't right. The puzzle pieces just didn't match up. I couldn't get her out of my mind. The way she looked, the way she smelled, the way she moved. If I could just talk to her. If you're looking for Dobbs, he isn't here, and he's never coming back. I'm warning you. Stay away from Joan Bennett, or else. Listen, pal, what business is it of yours who I associate with? 
This is Frank Grisham. Frank Grisham. I'm being set up. She set me up. There were still too many unanswered questions. I knew I should just let it go, but it's not in my nature. She set me up. I wanted to know why. Just when it looked like things were about to cool off by keeping my nose out of the case and letting the cops deal with the monkey business, I was suckered back in by yet another dame in distress. I guess I'm too thick-headed to learn. Excuse me. I'm looking for a private detective by the name of Dobbs. Can you describe him? Actually, I've never met him. Do you know where he is? Yes, ma'am. That's him over there. He's at the end of the bar. Aren't you a little old to be doing this? Go peddle your wares elsewhere. My dance card is all booked up. I've hired a few private detectives over the years. They didn't work out. My lawyer, Joel Epstein told me to get in contact with you. I've been looking all over town for you, Mr. Dobbs. Can I buy you a drink? You've met my personal secretary, Jonesy. He's a good man. Anything you have to say can be said in front of him. I know Epstein, but I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I'm Marion Grisham. Frank Grisham's wife? Frank Grisham's the movie producer. There's a name I'm sick of hearing. I know. I know. You need my help. And I'm the only one who can do the job. Pay handsomely if I'll clean up the mess and make the problems vanish, etc., etc. Why? Something like that, but not exactly. It's past bedtime. That is quite a bedtime story. Got a better one? By the way, I don't do hits, if that's what you're after. You'll have to find some other way to get revenge against your husband. Oh, Mr. Dobbs, you've got me all wrong. I don't want to hurt Frank. Not even one hair from his fat head. Especially, not murder. Though he deserves it a hundred times over. After 30 years of marriage and three kids. A 
I have a gin and tonic and give him whatever he wants? Yes, ma'am. There's a lot of perks being married to someone like Frank. Perks I like to keep for a while. Despite the will and the insurance. But his running around is embarrassing. Nothing I can't handle. I filed for divorce to scare him, to calm him down, while still giving him something to think about. His running around, spending the kids' inheritance on chippies, while I'm supposed to be home knitting? He's worth more to me alive than dead. Find out where he's hiding. Get rid of the riffraff. Make sure he's not harmed. Close down that party house and document everything. Give me your bill, triple of your usual. Plus, there's a hefty bonus if you hurry and send him back home to me. I'll take care of the rest. That's a tempting offer, Mrs. Gresham. There are complications. Call me Marion. There's more to that offer. Sometimes that big house is very lonely, especially when Frank's out of town. Do you babysit in your spare time? I like my bedtime stories told in bed, in person. Here's my phone number. And here's an advance. Thank you, Jonesy. You're forgetting one thing. There's still the nasty part about a dead guy swimming in a pool with no water. A guy said to be your husband, but isn't. Any idea who that guy is or was? or particulars about why it was stiffed, or who could have phoned me pretending to be your husband. I don't know anything about that guy, except it wasn't Frank. There's a number of people wanting to frame Frank or claiming to be him. It's none of my business, although Someone followed me here. What about framing me? You don't seem too concerned. You don't wonder who might be next. It's a big pool. One night, Frank came home stinking drunk. He passed out. I picked up a pillow. I was gonna put that pillow over his face and get it over with once and for all. But I couldn't. I wanted to, but I couldn't. This might be hard to believe for you, but I still love Frank. I want the world to know he's mine. I want him home where he belongs. Besides, 
We need a fourth for Rummy with the couple next door. Let's be clear. I don't like being treated as though I can be bought or that I can be had. And I especially don't like being the patsy. You don't like me? Is that it? I didn't say that. Yeah, I'll see where this takes me, since I'm right in the middle of it anyway. I'll call you if I have anything. No promises, no returns. I have to go. I'm late for a massage. I'll wait for your call. Next week? Tomorrow? Maybe later? By the way, if you do find Frank, and he asks you to be in one of his cheap movies, a bit of friendly advice. You should say no. It always starts and always ends in tragedy. Fade to black, the end. As if all of that wasn't strange enough, it seemed the walls were moving in on several levels of my social circles, crimping my usual freestyle modus operandi and making me feel as though I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think clearly. I was losing my personal and professional edge. And that is a dangerous position in my trade. Get out of here. I don't want no trouble. It's okay, Jonesy. He's with me. Aren't you, Toots? What's the matter, Toots? You look like you've seen a ghost. As a matter of fact, you don't look so good at all. I'm 
I'm sick. I'm real sick. I got your message from the owner of the flop house down on Lennox. You got something for me? Anything? This goes to its. The question is, do you have something for me? What do you know about the movie producer Frank Grisham and his ritzy party mansion? Yep, not so fast. Go ahead, I'm listening. Lots of talk going around. His name, your name, other names. I was playing keys at the lounge downtown when I hear guys talking a couple nights ago. Upper class types, union or, or mobsters, or both. Hey, a studio guy has gone missing. Lenny Mankiewicz. Seems he started knowing too much about too many people in town, including Gresham. Even though he had just arrived from Chicago four months ago. worked as a gaffer, but he was trying to move into casting fast and heavy by supplying girls to directors, executives, casting agents, including his own wife, Dolores. Mankiewicz was working out of the Alla Garden Apartments on Vine. They said that you were involved somehow. That you would tip off Mankiewicz whenever the cops were starting to catch on. And then Gresham's money would hush it up. They s said, hmm, please, Dobbs, no more. I can't. You did good. Very good, Toots. <laughs> This is the break I need, Dobbs. I'm gonna go away and get clean. You'll see. I know you will. Get something to eat. Promise me. Now, run along before Jonesy gets jealous. Score a fix. End up dead in an alley with a needle in his arm.
He hasn't been alive for a long time. At least between now and then. He'll cling to his dreams for a few hours. Give me a whole bottle. I feel like getting drunk. Funny how not being sober can sometimes bring sobriety to a situation. While I continually wondered where all of this was leading in the here and now, standing alone on an empty street at midnight, I was reminded of the past. Once a bright young man with a promising future, a handful of lost loves whose faces I can't picture any longer. How I've always worried my mother. Why do I do this? Put myself in these positions. I love my job, no question. Even with the crazy characters and unpredictable danger involved. What else could I do and still be on the right side of the law? A bank teller, school teacher, librarian? I'd suffocate. No, it's not the job. It's my personal life that needs work. Personal, but I need to see if you have a gun. Gun? I don't have a gun. Try anything smart. It'll be the last thing you ever try, Capiche? All right, Junior. Time to spill your guts. Why did you run when you saw me? Hold on a sec. Aren't you the box boy from the grocery store? Jimmy? What are you doing out on a school night this late? Please, mister, I don't want to lose my job at the store until some things work out. And I, and I don't want to get into any trouble. Mrs. Gresham, do you know her? Oh, yes, Mrs. Gresham. I just met her. She hired me to be a masseur at night on the weekends, on the side, after work, and when her husband's out of town. We had an appointment tonight. She, she likes my strong hands. She says, why hire a man when a boy can do the job better? She does have a way with words. 
So I followed her to make sure some other guy wasn't cutting in on the action. Then I saw you and thought you'd beat me up for cutting in on your action. So I ran. She got her movie producer husband to put me in the movies. She said he said yes. I'm gonna be a high school teenager that turns into a werewolf. Can you believe it? It's happening so fast. I just realized drinking for the night might not be over. Are you on the long distance track team? Listen, kid. You're getting in way over your head with these people. I've been a private detective a long time. I've seen things. Unsettling things you can't unsee. And even I'm over my head. Don't get your hopes up. You'll end up being disappointed and as jaded as I am. Trust me, you don't want that. Now, beat it before I really do take a swing at you. Hey, mister! Yeah, kid? What about you? Got strong hands. Impressive. You got Moxie, kid, I'll give you that. You know, something tells me you're going to draw right for yourself in this town after all. See you in the movies, Jimmy. Aren't you going to invite me in for a drink?
Don't you own any other clothes? I can take them off at any time. I assume you're alone. Looks like I caught you just in time. Going someplace sunny, are you? I see you packed suntan lotion. You must have known I'd come calling, lover. I mean, we're partners in this thing, don't you think? If you don't leave, I'll... I'll scream! Go ahead. Scream your head off. Maybe I'll scream too. It'll do us both some good. So, who are you this time, Angel? Jane Bennett? Perhaps Joan Bennett? The old incarnation, Mrs. Dolores Mankiewicz, Lenny's wife from Chicago. Are you going to leave the room, do a quick change, and come back as someone else? Is there another alias waiting in the wings, yet to make an entrance? You are a good actress, no matter what anyone thinks. So you know. So what? Let's go over this real slow so I can catch up. You're married to the schmo, Lenny, who, after breezing into town, is playing all kinds of angles to all kinds of people, hoping to get somewhere. I didn't kill Lenny. Lenny set you and some other girls up as tricks with Gresham to compromise him for a shakedown or something close to that. Only something went askew. I didn't kill him and neither did Frank. Lenny got in too deep or got too talkative too greedy or too pushy and had to be dealt with. Maybe Lenny couldn't deliver on his promises and that ticked someone off. What was it? I fell in love with Frank. Everyone's in love with Frank. Everybody. No one saw it coming. Especially not Lenny. Lenny was a monster. A sad little man who hated women and hated himself for it. I married him to get out of town. Then, I met Frank. There's no one like Frank. He has eyes on the back of his head. He sees everything, knows everything, knows everyone. Frank has his flaws, like we all do, but he has a gift. A gift of making me feel special. Like I'm worth something. Whatever I did, or didn't do, I did out of gratitude to Frank. I don't care what happens to me. Wait a minute. You set Lenny up with Gresham, not the other way around. He 
get him out of the picture. That was Lenny at the bottom of the pool. And you needed someone in the mix to take the heat by telling the cops that Lenny was Gresham. And that's where I came in? Cops wouldn't believe you, but they'd believe me. Buying Gresham time. It's still not making sense, sweetheart. You don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill Lenny. I already told you what happened. I woke up, saw him lying there, I looked you up in the phone book and called. It was dark. I made a mistake. I thought Lenny was Frank. Dead. Lenny wasn't even supposed to be there. He got jealous, showed up, started yelling about how we should take Frank for all he has. Ruining everything. Think whatever you like. I told you all I know. I'm leaving. And I am not coming back. Oh, come on. You wouldn't have to do better than that. How naive do you think I am? You're obviously stupid, but you're not that stupid. You're cute. I'm tired of dancing around. Someone is dead. Someone called me saying it was Frank Gresham and to stay away from you, whoever you are. Where is Frank Gresham? I don't know. That's the truth. He disappeared the other night, and I haven't seen him since. You call me stupid? You're the detective, and you can't figure out where a movie producer would go when he doesn't want to be found? Through the fog of a larger-than-life hangover and a convoluted rehashing of events, I had the first real lead in the case, a key to open the story, wide open. The obvious answer was right in front of me the whole time, too close to gain perspective. She was merely a puzzle piece, like the others, like me not the puzzle itself. The guilty usually returned to the scene of the crime. I was looking at the wrong suspect of the wrong crime at the wrong scene. Goodbye, Cecil Dobbs. Number, please. Peabody 628, please. One moment. Thanks.
County Medical Examiner's Office, Dr. Milton Hurst speaking. Doc, it's Dobbs. Hey, I was hoping to speak to you. You certainly have a habit of staying in the eye of the storm, don't you? Just lucky, I guess. So far, everyone involved in this is talking. They're just not telling me anything. You have something? Well, this time it's not so much what we have as what we don't have. Hmm. The autopsy is complete, thorough, head to toe, standard procedure. I'm pretty sure we have Lenny Mankiewicz. His wife came in earlier today to ID the body. Cool as a cucumber. She didn't seem at all rattled that her husband is deceased. She told me she had no idea how he died, even though I hadn't asked. And she suggested that he might be ill with a congenital condition. I'm going to wait for medical and dental records and a mugshot to arrive from Chicago as secondary verification before I sign off. Is the wife's name Dolores? A slinky looker with long hair and even longer legs? No, oh, that's her. I can tell you this. He was not shot, stabbed, strangled, suffocated, bludgeoned, or poisoned. There were no cuts, bruises, or punctures, and absolutely no sign of an aneurysm. But a man doesn't die without cause at the bottom of an empty swimming pool, fully dressed. My gut instinct tells me that it's homicide, probably a crime of passion. But at this point, we have cause and no proof. It's suspicious. It's as though he was scared to death. That may be closer to the truth than the truth actually is. Keep me posted, Doc. I'm off to the movies. Oh, and Doc, thanks for being the only one who always tells me the truth, even when it's not what I want to hear. And I don't need to remind you how important discretion is, as always. Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. All of them. See you later, Cecil. dish about the professional and the private lives of the movie stars you love. Another exclusive story just in Hollywood, California. A little birdie told me 
a certain B-movie film producer with the initials FG has gone into deep hiding after a tragic incident at his sprawling mansion with a studio employee with a murky past. Rumor has it, F.G., who is known for several highly public indiscretions, as well as his slapdash movies, was murdered in his own house. But now, we have learned that isn't the case at all. It seems a newly discovered starlet is involved in the tawdry, triangle, tangled, potboiler off screen with the deceased, pushy, studio lackey husband and the hands-on always tipsy producer. Naughty, naughty. Her talent. Trouble. To complicate matters, a local detective was seen snooping and spying, digging the dirt faster than a grave robber, even as the question of his entanglements in the whole whodunit are loudly whispered on every corner. The police are as tight-lipped as usual. As suspicion mounts, finger-pointing includes a gaggle of gamblers, a bevy of dubious business owners, and a sundry peripheral goons. <laughs> F.G. signed this fresh-off-the-bus promising reporter with dreams of stardom to a contract several years ago. A contract with the devil. Thank goodness I could outrun that fool around that famous desk. Let's just say, Hollywood, Hollywood is realizing the party is over. Stay tuned as this sensational story unfolds. There's sure to be a dramatic twist ending. Remember, you heard it here first. This has been the Hollywood hostess, Edwina Evans. <laughs>
Frank Gresham. In the industry, there's a term for pictures like this one. A stinker. I should know, I've made a lot of them. This one cost $15,000 to me. Reverse the effects of the atomic serum? Is that even possible? What if something goes wrong? You're that gumshoe that Dolores called. I knew you'd run into me eventually. When you look for a rat, you look in a rat hole. Your wife hired me. She wants you to come home. She always wants something. Popcorn? I suppose you want to know what happened the other night? Sure. Just for the sake of my diary entries. To tie up any loose ends. <clears throat> Ever hear the old saying, there's no such thing as bad publicity? In this country, you can only be convicted of a crime by evidence that proves your guilt beyond the shadow of a doubt. As long as there's doubt, a question, there's no conviction. Doubt lingers and grows and never dies. People don't want the truth. They prefer a lie. Audiences know movies are cardboard and glitter tricks. And yet they believe in movie magic. They pay money to watch a flicker of light on a wall. Get emotionally involved as though they've had an actual experience. Even as I speak, you're doubting me. You don't believe me even now. What about Mankiewicz? Who knows? Probably a heart attack. He was a weasel. Too needy, too desperate, too crude for my tastes. Pimps should have class, don't you agree? All I did was put him in an empty pool, have Dolores say he was me, and the rest of the story writes itself. A bit of improvisation gives the material a sense of immediacy, see? No scientist has ever been as dedicated as you. No one ever will. Anyone with eyes can see your greatest achievement. Dolores. Or should I say, Jane Bennett? Perhaps Joan? She seems convinced she's more than passing through the early rewrite stages of this plot and wants to be written out. Sweet kid. Pretty. Should never have left Chicago. Having aliases makes someone suspect, doesn't it? She'll be back when someone else exploits her, and they will. You know, I tried to warn you to stay away, but I knew that would just draw you further in. So 
that was you. That just leaves your wife, Marion. She's going to have to learn to live on her own without me as a director. I take full blame for that one. She's another classic example of spoiling a young and innocent girl over the years to make her happy until she turns into a monstrosity to be pitied. <sighs> Pathos makes ugly creatures relatable. <laughs> Doctors give me six months, give or take. Just like Mankiewicz, I have a bad ticker. No drinking, no cigarettes, no honeys, and for what? In my age, in my condition, a guy like me starts to think about his legacy. What people will say about him when he's gone. Even though I have enough fight left in me to do it all over again. One more comeback. One time great enfant terrible of Z-grade movies faces the final rap. It went by fast. That legacy includes me. <laughs> Typecasting in its purest form. You and your damn morals playing the high and mighty hero. Are you here to make a citizen's arrest? Are you gonna turn me over to the cops? I was hoping that you'd be greedy enough to exploit a perfect situation ripe with opportunities handed to you on a silver platter. So far, discretion has kept me alive as much as my gun has. Go to the cops, go to the press, to anyone interested who listen, even that mouthy Edwina Edwards. Tell them everything that you know, everything you've seen. Don't leave anything out. Let them know that you're a two-bit contract player in the background who was pushed forward into the limelight against your will. As they say in the trades, it's got legs. Dead body, sex, power, money, mystery, monsters. Better than Shakespeare. They'll love it in Pomona. They'll love it everywhere. person's value, so it seems, is only as good as their story, and how that story is valued by an audience. Turns out, Frank Gresham, with his prolific list of low-budget melodramatic epics, was a master storyteller, a carnival barker who 
couldn't tell where one story started and the other ended, or which parts, if any, were actually fact. Uh. Oh, there must be someone, somewhere that can help us. A scientist, a doctor, a veterinarian. <laughs> I'll never leave you, my darling, even if you are a, a pig. Uh. And we live in a sty. Uh. As long as we're together. I've always hated happy endings. You'd think that this would be the end of this complicated saga. Gresham's story, my story, the story about a dame named Dolores and the dead guy at the bottom of the pool. But this fable was far from over, as Gresham predicted. As long as I live to tell the tale, people want to hear it, even when they've heard it before, even though they don't believe a word of it, even when they don't recognize the characters involved. Smoke and mirrors, show business, relationships, life, illusions. Victor, you must hide, not only for my sake, but for yours as well. The world isn't ready for this, for you as a human swine. 